Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And, and Martin from OS2 World. Um, I, I guess you all know about OS2 World. OS2 World is a, a community page about OS2 and become a station. And I, I'm just going to talk about some OS2 <coughs> applications that I use, some that I like and some that has potential. It's not like uh, something very structured. Uh, it's like my personal preference. And well, you may like it or not. It's just, it's just some of my comments about some applications that uh, you may know or you may not know. And I think they are useful for us, OK? So it's just a simple list. I think that the first one we all know is uh, PMU. PMU is our, our picture editing tool for uh, bitmaps uh, photographs, right? It's not vectorial. Is for bitmaps. You can crop them. You can resize them. Uh, you can change some of the levels of the picture. Uh, this is a commercial uh, product that is sold. I don't know for how many years. I think well, th this application won several awards from OS2 World, from other sites. Uh, I don't remember right now the name of the author, but he's well. You remember it, Eric. Erickson. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but he has been ma uh, making this application for several years and he does it for also for Windows and OS2. And I think it's like one of the best applications we have for uh, for picture editing on OS2. Mm -hmm. There are several others, but this is this has some some years on the market. Okay. Uh, this is an application that I like, it's called ASO Edit, that is to uh, associate the the, uh, the the files association, the files extensions with which application you're going to use to open it. So it's kind of complicated on the uh, on the workplace shell desktop or, or kind of tricky, more like complicated, to associate extensions with the, the application. So this is an, uh, an open source, well, an as is public domain tool that can help do it very quickly. So you select, oh, this is a zip file, and you open it with this application. And, and all .zip files will open with the application that you select. So I, I think it's very useful. It's some, like an, an utility that is, that is a must-have. There are other ways also uh, to have and to, to associate the file extensions, like uh, X workplace. But I think this is very simple and very very basic to use. This is an application that I really like, and one of the authors is here, Greg, is, is here. It's called L Switcher. Uh, L Switcher provides two things the Alt Tab switch replacement and uh, a taskbar also. Uh, well, the taskbar is nice, but I really like the, the Alt Tab functionality that you replace the common Alt Tab on OS2 with a very nice uh, graphic and you go selecting the icons, you can also configure this tab so you, you uh, so it, it, it sticks there, so it, uh, it doesn't disappear where you stop doing all tab and you, you just drop the hand, it disappears. No, you can also configure it to stick it and move it with the arrows to select the application that you want to switch to. It's very nice and, and I, I, I noticed that another warp stock uh, some people lost in, no, didn't know about it. So I think it is, it is good to give it a try, yeah? So you, uh, you can give it a try this application and uh, play around with it. It's very nice, which is also open source. It's, uh, it's GPL license. And I think, Greg, do you need any help? Or will you be gladfully welcome people that wanted to sure. help you with, with development? Any, anybody, anybody, anybody can fix the uni file. Okay, <laughs> there are some things that need to be fixed, there are some things that need to be improved, so since it's open source and it's on NetLabs, uh, everybody's welcome to give it a try and, well, I don't know, send their, their source code changes to Greg to check it out to see, to see if it can be merged. Okay, so it's a very nice tool that I think it, it deserves some, some testing on your side. The other tool that, well, 
that I would like to mention is Sketch it. Sketch it is to make like uh, graphics. Mm, very, it's like a very common, like a paint tool on Windows. Uh, this tool used to be called Draw It when it was closed source. Now that it was open source, I cannot use the name Draw It. So it was renamed to Sketch it. And all the source code uh, is also available uh, for anyone that wants to play with it. It's, uh, I, cannot be, I cannot say it is an excellent tool, but it's a good tool to learn uh, uh, how to draw a little bit. And also it's a good look, uh, good look to learn the source code if you like to produce or to, to generate some kind of tool like this one, okay? So uh, it's open source. You can also check it on the OS2 World Wiki. I have created a page for this tool. You can download the source code, you can download the binaries, give it a try, and, and play with it, okay? Is that uh, more like freehand sketching? Yeah, it's freehand like sketching. It's not, it's not like, draw, yeah, it's, it's not like how to not cut. Graphics still, okay. Yeah, it's not like how to cut. It's like a free graphic okay. with the mouse. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have any kind of sophisticated support for pen or anything yeah. like that. It's with the mouse, you go draw it. Very similar to paint on Windows. Okay. But since it's open source, I kind of like it because you kind of you kind of play it, play with the source code and try to produce something similar. This is a tool that I also like. It's called Hotshot. It's a Qt application. This is an application to uh, capture uh, the, the, your screen, uh, your screen, uh, capturing a screenshot of your computer and you can save it on different uh, formats. Um, it's, a Q, it's, an, uh, it's an Qt4 application. You need to uh, download all the Qt libraries. Also, you require, well, since it's Qt, you also require LiveC library. Uh, the easy way to install it is with uh, RPM jump or um, Arca in a package installer, Arca package manager, sorry. So you can install all those libraries, and you can grab uh, this software on uh, on the NetLabs Qt Apps uh, Qt Apps website. So it's very good to try to capture uh, screenshots. And also the nice things about Hotshot is also it also have an its own edition to uh, edition program to uh, to edit the picture a little bit. So you cannot arrows, for example. You can use the highlighter. You can crop the image. Uh, you can do several things. You can add text to the screenshot. And you can save this picture to share it, to do anything you want. It, it's kind of also nice that it also can work like a separate editor. You can use the editor to open also, also some, some pictures to, to, to modify them. OK? So this is how. Another thing that is very useful, useful is uh, uh, in, in X Workspace. I don't know, everybody uses X Workspace, right? Oh. Yeah? Or an e commerce station? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It comes pre installed in e commerce station. So you, you're using e commerce station, you have X Workspace. But I noticed that uh, a lot of people didn't use this functionality, which is very, very good for the DLL help that is going to the e-commerce station kernel or OS2 kernel uh, on, the, on the system options. And you can go to system paths and check the duplicated on the system path. And you will see all the DLLs that are duplicating on your path. And for example, right here, I don't know, you, you cannot read it, but you can check, for example, this is the same DLL. And you can see here if they have the same size and date. So if they are the same, usually you don't have any problem with duplicated DLL. Okay, there are the same DLLs there. But if uh, the size is different, you can see, oh, I may have a conflict here. So you, it, this can help you a lot with all the stuff that did, uh, with DLLs, especially with uh, the ARCA package management that also installs a DLLs from the repository. So you can check, oh, this one is duplicated, this is older, I will wipe this out. I will re remove this DLL that is duplicated. Marcy, so, are yeah. those listed in, in search order sequence? Uh, 
the, the DLLs uh, or, or the duplicated files are listed in, in order, in alphabetical order. Oh, and alphabetical order. Yeah. I'm thinking about path order, though. Path order, not. Okay. You can check it. Uh, the path you can check, well, if there's the lead path or the path or the D path, you can select that. Okay. And it will show you, only the duplicate will show you. Uh, it will show you only the duplicates okay. in alphabetical okay. order, so you can quickly find them and say, okay, this is duplicated, I delete the file, or I try to, well, or you need to open up the configs and find that, uh, that path and remove it, okay? It also lists the directory or the path here. Yeah, I'm seeing okay. that. I'm seeing so that. it's very useful for that. There are people that complain a lot of, oh, this is the DLL hack. I don't know if you have the old or the newer one. So you just use, well, it's very useful to use Arca, Package installer, just install all the DLLs there and check here if Ecom Station has an older one on some directory. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of a, a useful trick and it's a very nice and simple application. This one, uh, this is an application called New File Manager that I like it, but not because it works very fine. I like it because the potential of it, it looks very nice but the issue is that it doesn't work, uh, it's, it's not finished, it doesn't work completely. But the good thing is that it's open source on the VSD like license, so we, you can create the derivative works. And uh, it's very interesting because, well, there is, the, there is the file manager, there is a preview area where you can preview some, some pictures, and also it can help you with some graphics. It has very interesting libraries on it. Okay, so uh, this is a very interesting software to try out the source code, try out to compile it, try out to, to play with it, and it has potential to, to be improved, okay? It doesn't mean it works, it kind of works in some way, but I think it has potential, so it, it's kind of nice uh, to also name it. <coughs> Another application that I like is this one called System Load. System Load is an, a, a utility to monitor the system status. It's also open source on the VSD free closed license. It can help you to with, with more information and, and it's the good thing is that it's actively developed by its well by its author. Okay? So uh, it's a nice and updated tool to check well, I don't know, the like the drive space the processes that are running on OS2, and also uh, to check the CPU load and check some information about the CPU, okay? So we can have some nice uh, functions, have a graphic, um, and it, it's, uh, the good thing is, compared to other system monitoring tool, is that this one is uh, supported by its, its author and it keeps uh, releasing uh, uh, new versions, okay? It's not like discontinued software or abandonware, okay? This is an, an also a tool that I like. It's called Taskbar. It's, uh, it's very simple. It's a Qt application, and what you can do is, uh, I don't know, it works like, do you remember uh, OS2 Warp 3 Launchpad that yeah. used to be on, uh, on the, on the down on the bottom part of the screen. Well, you can move it anywhere, but it used to be right there. And that thing, like, I, I think that Mac OS copied that concept and make their dock, their dock things with icons that grow and you can click it and some others that expand, just like the launch pad. This is like a modern one, very similar to the dock that Mac OS has. Uh, that was copied from the launch pad. <laughs> that I think it was copied from the launch pad. And you can set the icons that you would like to have as, a, as fast access, access icons on your desktop. And when you move the mouse over it, they will grow up the icon. And you can click it, and it will launch the application. Um, maybe the, the well, you, you, can, you can have very interesting settings, and you can customize the background. You can customize the icon size, because now we have bigger screens, we want bigger icons. Um, uh, well, there are several settings you can play around with the fonts. If you just hover the mouse over it, it will tell you like founder beer 
and what this application does, you can customize that kind of thing. Maybe the maybe the the the, the downsides of this application is that you need to download the icons individually. Uh, I was maybe I would suggest the one who ported to include more icons, but it's a very nice tool to have and and to make the 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 graphic user interface to, to be more current. Yeah, to show it like more more modern. <laughs> Okay. Does, does that include icons for OS2 programs, or are they more generic? No, there are generic PNG I uh, okay. icons that you can download. Uh, so you grab the PNG and, I don't know, Google image, you download them, mm. and <coughs> you just set the icons there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we would require like putting more icons there on the, on the package. It's not, it, it's not very hard, but I think it will be useful to put the icons there for people not, not, not to go searching those. Yeah, but it's a nice little application. It's also on their QT. It's also open source, and and you can try it anywhere. You, it's on the NetLabs QT um, repository, QT apps repository. Okay. There are also several. Well, this is a text editor. There are a lot of text editor now. It's two. There are open source. There are closed source. There are abandoned ones. There are current ones. This is just a very simple text editor that I like to use from time to time called Con. That it also was closed source software, but the author open sourced it. So you can also have access to the source code. And it's very simple to have, uh, to help a little bit, well, people that develop simple things, you can, uh, you can have a very easy uh, graphic user interface with your numbers, with your line numbers, and run also some basic script. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of nice and simple tool, but in this case, well, everybody has their own favorite text editor. So we're, we're not going to discuss which one text editor is where, but I kind of wanted to name it here. Okay? Uh, the other tool that I found very useful is Data Seeker. Data Seeker is a, um, it's a project that has like ages on NetLabs. It replaced a uh, pmseek.exe. So it, it's a tool to uh, find files and file text inside, the text the strings inside a file. So for example, you can select the, the hard drive you are searching for, or the several hard drive. You can search which kind of files do you want to find. For example, this is the, the, the headers from source code from point H. Well, you can search, just show me all the, the exe files that have this name, the DLLs that have this name, and which uh, text are you looking at. So it searches for file names, and it also search for what is inside the, the, the files. Yeah. This program, for example, helps me a lot because it also search inside like the binaries and try to find you the, some, some text inside the binaries. So when I'm searching for the APIs, uh, the functions inside an API, I can uh, uh, use it to try to find the, the, the files that uses that functions. Yes? It reminds me of uh, some facility that used to be in uh, WordPerfect. Mm. Mm. I don't know, maybe it's similar. I don't, I don't remember. I, I yeah. use WordPerfect in the past, but I don't remember it too much. Yeah. It used to be able to find yeah. a string within a file. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, this is what, uh, well, it helps a lot to have that, yeah. And like I told, I, I use it also for, for example, I find a function name, and I try to search that function name inside the binaries to know which binary has that function name. So it kind of, it kind of helped me uh, with the, <coughs> with the ADM, ADM wiki to help document the APIs also. I'm going to talk that uh, about the, that that project tomorrow, okay? So it's also open source. It's BSD three close, which means that everything works can be open source or can be closed source, okay? Another tool that also has potential, but it's very tricky. Uh, I recommend if you're going to try it to to um, to, to have it on a test environment first. And try to learn about it before before going to a more uh, more important environment is multidesk. 
Multidef is a tool that allows you to have like a, a user and a password uh, for different mm -hmm. desktops. So you can have like different users that access the, the same OS2 machine and everybody has a user and password. It's not like a, it's not like super safe, super safe because OS2 is not multi-user, yeah? But it can show you, it can um, produce a different desktop for each, uh, for, for a different people that connects on that machine, okay? So you can manage them on a, <coughs> on a, uh, on this application. You can create the users. You can define which run, uh, workplace is going to run, PM shell is standard and where the, the mini files that are going to run for that test, okay? It's, it's also very, very easy to use, and it's also open source, so it also has potential for everybody to grab it, and modify the source code to improve it, and also to release new versions, okay? Use it with care. <laughs> Just beware of not using it on a, on a on a production environment until you really know how it works, okay? Because you can point to the wrong ini and you will have to reboot in command line mode and change all the things, okay? The other tool that I like, and also the developer is here, is PMDLL. This tool is, is very useful, here's Steven, that he also, he, he calls some, we, uh, sorry, Stephen. Uh, who was the original author of this tool? Uh, go help out. I think yeah, I know. We'll, we'll need to check it out. It's an Andreas, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, but but Stephen also. Yeah, his name is still on there. We keep yeah. it on there. Yeah, but Stephen is also uh, updating this tool. It, it's a very nice tool because uh, you can uh, grab an EXE file or an EDL file, and you can know which. Uh, uh, which are the dependencies on libraries. So if you have a program that does not run, uh, you can open that program with this tool and it will tell you, oh, this one requires live C 066 dump DLL and you don't have it. If you don't have it, it will show up. Uh, if you don't have it in the path, it will show up in red. So you can know, oh, this application is not running and it's because I'm missing this DLL or I'm missing this other dependency. It's also good to study some, uh, when, when you de develop your software, the first time you can study your exe, for example, this is a, an exe I produce. Since I produce it with GCC compiler, it will link it to libc and GCC DLL. So it's kind of nice tool to know why an application is not running, and it's, it's a very nice and simple to use utility, okay? As long yes. as they don't dynamically load uh, DLLs. So uh, what? Know. As long as the application doesn't yeah. dynamically load DLLs, you wouldn't no, have I, don't think that's, I don't think that's the case. Steve, is Steve still there? Huh? No. It, yeah, it, How would you it tell? Will, it Good will load. test load yeah. the DLLs called in the file. In the, in right. the but, if, index if you, but you can dynamically load DLLs at runtime. <laughs> Which are not not part of the EXE's symbol table, you know. So, it, well, no, I guess not. Steve, yeah. Steve, does it dynamically loaded DLLs? Yeah, there's an option there to do test loads. What's missing, and if they ever let me give me enough time, it doesn't have full extended live cap support. Yet. So it won't necessarily tell you exactly what's going to happen if you have live cap strip set or if you have extended live cap. Place. Like begin but, like that. But yeah. if you do the test load, it's going to use that stuff because it's got no choice. Okay. And what you have to do is, if you want to do it, set your session up, start PML, PMDLL, and then do the test load. The only thing that's unsafe about the test load is because it's really loading it, it's going to run the init term routines, and this may or may not have bad side effects. Ah. Now, what I use as an alternative for that, which has the same net problems, is I use check DLL32, which is command line. Mm -hmm. And it does a couple things differently. So, you know, if you don't get the answer you want here, check DLL32 can help. But as Lewis found out, 
it doesn't always give you the right answer either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it gives you a hint, so that's good. Pardon me? It, it gives you a hint, so that's good well, also, it, yeah. It, it definitely <laughs> it solves more problems than it yeah. creates. So yeah. from that point of view, it's a good tool. Okay. okay, so this is also a very simple tool that, yeah, and graphic tool that will help you also if you have a DLL, uh, an Excel file that does not run. Or you can also check DLLs to check what is the, uh, the dependency of also that DLL. Well, a DLL is like an executable also, so it is like almost the same. Also, well, what is a must-have application is the VNC viewer and PMVNC. This is to, uh, uh, to control a remote um, remote desktops or remote uh, a remote is some kind of trying to get a remote session of OS2 to control the graphic user interface and um, to do anything you have uh, to, to the, do anything you want from uh, a different location. So BNC is a very useful tool. It, co it came from the Linux Unix world and it was poured to OS2. So it's like a must-have application. BNBNC is our server. It's the server uh, that makes your OS2 computer to share the, the screen and to share the control. And BNC Viewer is like the client application that will um, that will open the session of other computer. Yes, Sam. There's a BNC Viewer that was just dropped on Hobbs yeah. this last week. Yeah. Like, yes, two days ago, three days ago. That's, that's why we need to check it with PM yeah. DLL. <laughs> we can check the libraries that it used the new, the new BNC Viewer version. But but it's, this is a must-have application if you want to take control of, uh, of you have several computers and you want to control it from one station and you just need the IP address of each computer you want to control and the password and you access it and you you change whatever you want. So if you have more than one computer with those two. This is like a must-have application. Okay. And that server exists on Windows also. Uh, yes. 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 You can use, for example, VNC Viewer to control a Windows, um, a, a Windows machine <coughs> also from OS2. I thought I understood so it came from Unix, not from yeah, Linux. Yeah, from the so Unix Linux war. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, but How it's older. It? It's older than Linux. Yeah, it's older. Really. <laughs> from the Asterix Nix world. How do you call it? Yeah. From AT and T. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's a long time. A long time ago. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Also, you should mention that if you need a secure connection, it works very well over S tunnel. Oh, okay. Okay. That's We're good. actually doing that right now. Okay. That's good. And this is also a, a nice application that I like. It's called QP, a QPDF View. I don't know if you have used it. It works very, uh, very good to open PDF files, so you can read the PDF files. That's their their basic um, functionality. But what is interesting about this uh, application is that you can also add notes to the PDF, and it will work, we will see like it, we will show like this, like this icon, and also you can highlight some words of the PDF and save it. So it kind of offers you an extension functionality to the simple uh, PDF viewer application, okay? It, it, well, for example, that is a comment that you can put it there and, and open the comments. And it's, um, it's a QT application. It requires, of course, it requires uh, Live-C, but it also requires COPS, it requires the COPS DLL, not COPS running, but just to, uh, Call the DLL. So it kind of be tricky to configure this, this application, but it's very useful uh, to view PDF, uh, to put annotations on the PDF, and to make, uh, well, to highlight some text on the PDF. Okay? That is, this is, this is all one uh, that I wanted to show you. I don't know if you want to comment about any, any of your favorite applications. Uh, on OS2, any comment station, anything that you like to use, and we can all learn from it and get some ideas. Okay? 
It's open to you. <laughs> okay. A, uh, a simple one, of course. Yeah. It's 4 OS 2, which is in there. Yeah. But there's also a gentleman who went considerably along with 4 DOS for anybody who's using, yeah. is using DOS stuff. And it actually added a lot of extensions to it. And it's not being developed anymore, but it's still available on the internet. Okay. So just look up 4 DOS and four it'll, DOS. it'll okay. pop up. Yeah. Gives you the same. Um, the same stuff as 4 OS 2. In fact, you have to be careful occasionally because it's got yeah. more stuff than 4 OS 2 has. Okay. Um, there are differences because of the fact that DOS is going to wait for something to finish before it goes to the next one. Whereas yeah. OS 2 will say, oh yeah, I can do that and I can do something else too. Okay. And you have to be careful that the uh, data is not ready yet because the first part is not finished. But that's uh, okay. Yeah. It, it has potential to, oh, yeah. to you be... Can, you can do all kinds of yeah. stuff with it. To be positive. <laughs> yeah, you can be... Okay. It, it can be changed, it can be improved, since the source code is available. Uh, I'm sure. yeah. yeah, the source code is available. Um, but just I just plain use it um, okay. for scripting and, and all that. Okay. I mean, both 4OS2 and 4 also are like programming languages, except that you have to keep track of the variables yourself. They're all just uh, uh, well, say, mental blank. Because um, they're all environment variables. That's good. Yep. Any other application that you like to mention? No? Okay, so that's all. I, that's all I just want to show you. Like, I, I only want to, to expose some applications that I like, and maybe <coughs> you can try it out and see if you also like it or not. And if you don't like it, you can post it on the OS2 World Forum and say why do you like it. But don't comment about the author, just the other application, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.